Hello, Keith Rocker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, got a little quick project we're going to get working on here uh, today. And what we've got is a straight edge. This is a, a casting, a raw casting for a Kingway 24 inch straight edge. And uh, these are uh, made and sold by Richard King, who, of course, uh, is one of the guys that teaches our, or is the guy that teaches our scraping classes. And uh, Richard has got a class coming up. Uh, in January down in Florida. Uh, it's not one that I'm hosting. I'm going to try to get down there to part of it anyway, but uh, had a couple of students that had some straight edges that they wanted to get uh, machined so that they could use it as a scraping project in their class. And uh, when I'm asked me if I would do the machining work on it, I said, sure, we'll get that done for you. So Richard shipped me one of his raw castings, and today we're going to work on getting this machined. Interestingly, I, I happen to know that uh, literally while I'm doing this project, Adam Booth is down in Florida. He's got some of the exact same straight edges he is uh, working on as well uh, for himself. And uh, his uh, he is actually machining using his metal shaper, uh, which is a really cool way of doing it. Uh, I'm going to be using the milling machine. Uh, we're going to be using both the horizontal and vertical milling machines to do the milling work. And then I will take it to my surface grinder, we will surface grind the two surfaces that will be used uh, to be scraped to get them really super flat and accurate and make the, make the scraping job a little bit easier. If you get it flat to start with, uh, it doesn't take nearly as long to get scraped in. So uh, I will say that I really, really, I, Adam has sent me some text messages showing me the finish he's getting off of his metal shaper right now. I love the look at that striped pattern uh, that you get from planing or, or using a shaper. And I'm really anxious to get my metal uh, planer up and going so that I can machine some straight edges, particularly longer ones. Right now, 24 inches is the max that I can do with capacity on any of my machines. Uh, but if I can, when I get my planer going in there, Theoretically, I could do one up, up to eight feet long. So uh, I'm really looking forward to having that. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, it really probably doesn't matter that much as long as you get them pretty well flat because the surfaces are going to be scraped. So uh, when it's all said and done, neither his nice, beautiful, planed surface nor my nice, beautiful ground surface is even going to be visible. We'll be coming in here and have a nice, even prettier, in my opinion, scraped look to it. So both of those surfaces will all disappear. But enough of me rambling on. On. Let's get over here. We're going to get my milling machine. We'll start on the horizontal mill uh, and get a couple of surfaces done on there. Then go over to the vertical mill and uh, finish up the milling part. Probably do the grinding in a separate video. So let's get going. Over on the horizontal mill, I have got a big face mill set up here on the front here. And we're going to start by doing the bottom edge. And uh, this is the way I usually do this is I just set the raw casting up on the table, clamp it down the table. I basically back it up to that bottom ledge down there is right up next to the table. And uh, that kind of squares it up as good as you can square up a raw casting. Uh, and we're just gonna go ahead and basically just cut the bottom until we get it cleaned up 100% uh, all the way across. And uh, then we'll turn it up and actually machine the back side of that square uh, by just again, turning it 90 degrees and flipping it around the table. So um, let's, uh, let's fire the mill up and do it. I'm just going to come in here. Because of the length of this, I basically will start to cut back here. But when it comes through, it will uh, we'll get the, the cut all the way through. Just won't double cut. There'll be a little area on the ends where we don't get it to cut on both sides. But we're going to grind it. so. It should be pretty flat. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to, we're just trying to get the bulk of the material off to get a clean casting here. The fine work is going to be done over on the surface grinder. So uh, I'm just going to come in here and um, got touched off there. I've got a dial indicator set up over here to measure how far I'm going in. And I'm just going to go in about 50 thou. There's really nothing critical about this uh, measurement at all. And we'll feed across and uh, once this, uh, we get this first pass done, we'll look and see whether we clean up and if we need to take some more off. Probably we're going to take a little bit more than that off, but this will give us a good start. Looking at uh, speeds and feeds, we're running at 250 RPMs on the cutter. 
And uh, we're cutting across here at about three and a half inches per minute. Uh, we could probably be running our feet a little bit faster. Speed's pretty good, uh, but I'll just take my time to get it done. And let me take a peek back here. Looks like at least on the end, we're cleaning up all except for the very top up here. We're gonna have to take another pass, but uh, it's all right. The first pass, I like to take a little bit on the conservative side because you just don't ever know how much variance there is in that thickness on the rough casting. You might start off with a 50 thousandths cut and if there's a bulge in the bottom, you could be making a 150 thousandths cut later in there. So uh, I like to kind of make a light pass to start with. And then uh, after we get that first cut made, I can be a lot more accurate with reading on my dials. See it coming off and uh, actually it's cleaning up pretty nice. Like I said, just except the top part up here. Uh, we'll see what it looks like when we get all the way across, but another probably 25,000 all we're gonna need to clean that bottom up. All right, that cleaned up pretty good on the first pass. Uh, I'm gonna probably, 25,000 would probably do it, but uh, I noticed there's a little defect on the other side. You can't see it. I'm gonna take 50 just to try to get that out. And uh, that'll be a total of 100,000 off the bottom. And I think we'll be fine. So let's take another pass across there. All right, we're feeding in. That's 50 thou right there. I'll engage my feed back across. Cruising along here. Looks like we're cleaning up nice on this fast, so I think that's all it's gonna take. All right, let's see what we got here. And, and you can see what we got. So uh, you can see we're Got the cutter there really cleaned up nice. Uh, we got a little bit of a cross hatch going here and then in down here, but this is gonna be fine. Like I said, that's not gonna be a, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily wanna have to scrape the surface. Uh, the, the finish off of the shaper or planer is gonna be a lot better, uh, mainly because I just, I can't get a solid sweep. If I could get this thing to sweep from one end to the other without having to stop my cutter halfway, it'd be a different story. But uh, it's gonna be fine. Like I said, we're gonna grind it. So we'll have a nice finish there. This is just rough milling right now. So let's go ahead and get set up to do the back, uh, back angle at 90 degrees. And uh, then we'll go over to the other mill and get the other surfaces done. Set up now to machine this backside square. So um, this backside isn't really that critical. Uh, it probably, I'm not even gonna grind it. I just, I just wanna get it machined and Richard says it only needs to be cleaned up about 75%. But um, we're gonna shoot for better than that. Um, I'm gonna come in and we're gonna take a 50 thou cut on it. And then we will uh, see what it looks like. Let me... Uh... So you get it touched off. All right, we just barely touched there. That's a 50 thou cut from the letter eat across there. Looking good, looks like it's cleaning up really well. See a little bit right there, it didn't clean up. Maybe just one little spot there, but again, this is not a uh, surface that's really being used for bluing up or anything. So this surface isn't really that critical. I think it's probably gonna be fine just like it is. We'll take a look at it once we get through this pass. So 
So that's 50 thou off the back. Got a couple little spots in here. A little bit of a void right here, holiday, a little bit right in here, and like I said, a little bit on the end, but I'm more than happy with that. Uh, that's going to be fine. And of course, we got a little bit of a surface difference here again where my cutter couldn't come all the way out to the end. Uh, just an old machine. It's hard to get, really impossible to get this thing trammed in perfectly. Uh, so you can run into some of that on the on this uh, old milling machine. One day maybe I'll rebuild it, uh, but who knows. I'm going to go ahead and square up both ends of this while I'm at it. Um, it just have the nice machined end on the end. You don't get the uh, chips and stuff when you're scraping sticking to the table. So uh, we're gonna do that. I just used a uh, square here up against the table, butted it up against this side we just machined and that's what we'll use to square those up. So um, we'll do uh, one pass on each side and uh, get that cleaned up. Let it feed across there. We're over on the uh, vertical mill now, and I've got another face mill in here. Uh, we're going to be working off the top now. First thing I want to do is just kind of get the top of the straight edge machine parallel to the other side. Now I will comment that this is really not critical from the straight edge standpoint, but when I do go to my surface grinder and I grind the bottom, I need a good nice surface to put on the, the chuck on my magnetic chuck on my surface grinder, which is why we will be uh, machining this top. Again, from a functional standpoint, it's really not necessary, but is kind of uh, wrong way is kind of on this uh, the way I'm going to be setting up. So I'm going to come up and uh, just touch off. I'm going to go out here to the end. I think I'll slow that down just a little bit. I'm going to do about a 25 thou cut. This machine's not as rigid as that horizontal mill, so I don't like to get quite as aggressive with it. And looks like we got a little bit of an uneven cut here. Top rather, which is not that unusual, it's a rough casting, so we'll just kind of zip across here until we get to an area where it's cutting. All right, we're starting to get some contact. I think we're done with this one. Let's uh, one more setup. We got to cut the dovetail edge. I'll let that go ahead and finish cutting on out the top, and uh, we'll uh, get set up for my dovetail. All right, guys. I think we're ready to start milling here this dovetail, and uh, we want to mill this to 45 degrees. So I've got a couple of uh, angle blocks up underneath the bottom here, and um, just basically got those clamped to the table. I'm using some. Big welding clamps to clamp this down to the to the V blocks, and hopefully everything's going to be rigid enough, and we'll come across here and skim that surface. Rather light pass. Again, I just don't know how much variation there is in height, so I just kind of 
touched off there. And we'll skim across this first pass and then start really cutting on the next pass. I just want to get that cleaned up 100%. I think we got it all cleaned up. It uh, actually cleaned up real nice. That surface machined out beautifully. Of course, it's not gonna matter. We're gonna put it on the grinder next anyway, uh, but really came out nice and got it cleaned up all except for just one little casting defect right up here in this corner. That's really not gonna matter for a hill of beans. I'm not gonna worry about trying to take it down another 200 thou to get that little bitty tiny piece out because we won't ever be printing up there anyway when we get this thing scraped out or the person that's getting it gets it scraped out. So that's it. Let me pull this thing out. I'm going to get a file, clean up these sharp corners, and I think we're done with the milling process here. Well, here we go. It's all uh, milled. We've got the, the bottom surface, the dovetail. These are the only two surfaces that we scraped. And of course, we machined the back edge, the top, and the sides. Um, the top really doesn't matter. We do like to have nice clean machine surfaces on the other sides. But uh, this is ready to go to the grinder now and we're gonna put it on the surface grinder and we'll get a really nice uh, finish on there. That'll be really close after it's uh, been, uh, been ground where it shouldn't take very much at all to get this thing cleaned up with scraping. Theoretically, you could uh, take it and scrape it as it is, but I'm sure that uh, just doing a quick dirty uh, milling job, no coolant, had heat in the part, you know, the bottom here, we got a little bit of roughness down there. There's probably, I'm gonna just say, I'm not even gonna put it on the surface plate to see, but I'm gonna say that there's probably four or five thousandths worth of uh, variations in those surfaces in various places. And in scraping, that's a mile. So uh, we can put it on the, the surface grinder and hopefully get it to within, you know, at least half a thou, uh, if, if not better. And that should make the scraping process go by really quick. So we'll do the grinding in another video down the road, but uh, a little quick milling job this afternoon. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed watching some milling this afternoon and uh, another straight edge getting knocked out here. Be done in time for the scraping class and we'll have us a grinding video coming up soon and to get this thing finished out. So and with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching the comments if you like and uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.